All right, cool. All right. Well, I mean, it's 6.03. We got six people, five, six people here. So that's good. So let's get started. You want to do that? Sounds good to me. So like, this is just going to be an open forum. It came up from, uh, you know, the text, the text uh, thread that we're all on, on Thursday mornings. And, um, you know, it's been opened up to a lot of other people. So who knows, other people might pop on, which is cool, but it's just basically to help each other be accountable for the different kinds of social media that we want to put out there. And, um, you know, it's hard sometimes to stay consistent. So, you know, I thought I would just float it if somebody wanted an accountability partner. And so this is how this started. So just a little bit of introduction. Everybody knows me who's on here, but um, in case somebody else is watching it, you know, from Texas and I've been with eXp since November, 2022. I've been a full-time agent for one and a half years and part-time for three before that. And I've been up on the East coast since 2008 and I live in Beacon, New York and I'm a full-time agent now. So I think I duplicated that. So, so anyway, so the things I want to cover in like this accountability format our um, social media lead generation goals, the 1 million followers book, which is a, uh, there's a guy who wrote, a, he tried to get a million followers in a month and he accomplished his goal. And so I was reading through that this week and getting some of the takeaways out of there just so that, you know, to stay fresh on top of social media and what's going on. And if this guy can get a million followers, then, you know, maybe he has something really good to, to offer everybody. And, and then also um, bi-weekly goals, open discussion, you know, who is your audience? Who are you trying to reach? Perfection is the enemy of success. And a little bit about Suma and Kim and where to start if you're making videos. And then just to have an open discussion. So, so the first thing is, you know, I kind of put together like a mantra, so to speak, but for us, as we're trying to grow our social media, just to remind ourselves what we're trying to do. And so basically, you know, we're trying to build an audience of people who call call me, buy, rent, or refer business, or refer because I'm being authentic, consistent, and my message resonates with them on social media. My message resonates because I'm providing value to my viewers and people they may know who want to buy or sell now or in the future. My goals are short and sweet so that I can accomplish them this week and next week. And I'm posting ahead of schedule so that I'm not chasing content creation daily. And I'm not reinventing the social media wheel. I study experts and duplicate their processes. So, so does any any of this stuff resonate with anybody? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, cool. All right. So feel feel free to jump in and talk about stuff whenever you want. Um, it's an open forum. It's not just you know. It's like a accountability group. So I'd love to hear everybody's feedback and whatever you think. If you know, feel free to jump in anytime. It's uh, it's not like me just talking over here. So. So one of the things, you know, I was reading the 1 million followers book and some of the ideas I saw in there that were really good is find ideas that aren't on trend and make shareable content. You know, a lot of people jump on trends and try to ride them, but try to find some things that are outside of the trend. Like Robbie, you said you, you took a video and then put it on TikTok, right? Yeah. So I, I tried out, so I, I had a, a huge mental block when it came to uh, TikTok, just cause I don't really, I, don't know, I got my own, my own little things about it. And, um, so when I jumped into, uh, I was actually at a inspection at, uh, for a client for a house I just got under contract. And all I did was take videos of the portions of the house that I thought were really cool. Yeah. Um, and all I did was slap it together with some, some, uh, music it took me like no time at all. And, uh, I realized that it ended up getting 900 views and I was like, Oh, that's interesting. Just cause like we, we underestimate the outreach uh, of those kind of platforms, uh, especially when it comes to like, I guess I find it to just be like, uh, Gosh. it's just like a, um, I don't know, like funny platform where it's, it's like a lot of entertainment stuff, not too much for like, you know, knowledge about, you know, real estate, obviously, but I mean, the cool thing is, is you could just generate attention through that platform by just doing simple things. So when yeah. I go to a inspection tomorrow, I'm going to do the same exact thing. So I'm going to try to come up with some formula that works like that, where it's just simply, okay, go look at a property, you know, while the inspectors are doing their thing, you know, take some videos of, the, of you know, what attracts you to the property and then just post it online with some music. Um, right. So yeah, I mean it's just stuff like that because you you want to you want to keep your your content like that short and sweet so that um, 
so that you can do things on the fly because not a lot of us like we're not social media professionals right we're all very busy in general answering the phone all day and doing whatever else uh, that for me that's what i'm trying to find is those those things that are are quick uh that i can come up with some sort of uh i guess a, a pattern on how i do it and then i can reproduce right because that's what it, that's what makes it easier for me is if i can just come up with some sort of way of doing it reproduce it and then i can pretty much just do it regularly right if i have to come up with creatives on my own like i love being creative but i get way too obsessive about it it, it turns into like you know me turning into a video editor instead of you know a real estate agent and i'm not looking to do that <laughs> right totally yeah okay can i ask you guys a question what are you seeing right now on the screen <laughs> it's like uh your presentation that says one million followers book okay cool because yeah. it kind of got wonky there for a minute because it popped up on my phone and then it like took over okay so all right cool so anybody else want to talk about like vina i know you're doing a lot with social media right now what's how's what's working for you really i'm focusing on um instagram and i feel like reels and anything that's helping people like just engage it was helping. Um, making sure that there's like some type of like a call to action, asking people for their opinions, making sure I, people know that I want to hear from them. Yeah, um, that's has been that's has been pretty helpful. Did I answer the question? Yeah, yeah, no, it's cool. Yeah. Oh. And have you found anybody that you like to follow online that's like giving you any ideas? Who who are you guys getting your inspiration from? To be honest with you, I'm I'm just uh, I'm just taking peeks at at some other realtors that are in the area that I find uh, are making interesting things, just for basic ideas. Yeah, so a lot of the people that I work with or I've done deals with, I'll follow them, and obviously I follow you guys and stuff like that. So that's really where I'm drawing, you know, inspiration from in general. Okay, yeah, I mean, that's where I get a lot of mine from too. Like, um, especially the EXP agents because I'm on the YouTube and there's so many of them that do so much great content creation and they have so many courses available and really are inspirational when it comes to, to putting out stuff and they have books published. So it, there's just so much out there. If you're, if you're consuming social media training, there's so much out there that can really help people grow. So it's kind of cool. Yeah. And I also like how this guy, 1 million followers said, focus on creating value, you know, dig for the nuggets of truth that other people are not focusing on. And then I was, he was also saying in there, ask yourself, how can you touch your audience in a way that inspires them and makes them feel connected or moves them in some way? Because when, one of the things that they noted from their experiences with social media is that when people um, create content that is shareable, it creates an emotional connection and elicits a relational bond with the viewer. And when they, and they said, when they share, they care. And when they care, they buy. So, you know, if you think about it, like as real estate agents, one of the things that we always do ask people is, or, you know, we always ask them, do you know anybody who's ready to buy or sell? Right. So if, if we ask questions on our social media, basically that, you know, like, do you know anybody who's ready to buy or sell? Uh, or, you know, is this can be helpful for somebody that you know, then that's one way that you might be able to connect with people and have your stuff shared because the goal is basically to get to get business from our social media. And if we can create a connection, then we can possibly get people to share our content with people who are looking to buy or sell. I could remind them like, oh, my brother or my sister or whatever, you know? So I thought that was kind of a cool thing they said when they share, they care, you know, and when they care, they buy. So it's kind of cool. And also this is one, you know, like they said, you know, create an emotional connection. And, you know, we all want to create content that's fun and interesting, and there's really no formula for it, you know, but try to find ways that you can catch people's attention and you'll have to try different things until you find a winning combination. You know, one, a lot of the people it, it, doing walkthroughs is always fun, but how can we make the walkthroughs interesting that make people really see something that they're not seeing from different real estate agents, you know, what can we do? And I know that, you know, asking questions about, some of the, when we're going to do real estate walkthroughs, you know, asking questions about from your audience is always a good strategy to get people to engage with your content. And they also said, follow your gut and be authentic. And the thing that kept coming up over and over in the book was just being authentic and, you know, social media is a two-way conversation. So when you're genuine and connected to yourself, it's easier for others to connect with you. So I thought that was kind of cool. So any, so as far as goals go, so what are the things that are working for you? We've kind of touched on some of that, but like if everybody could just like talk a little bit about, you know, what 
social media platform that they want to focus on if you're just getting started? I'll start, you know, just with me as far as I do a lot with um, YouTube and I've seen success with that. I've got um, clients from YouTube. I got people reaching out to me all the time. I've had a Zoom call this week. I've had multiple emails come in. I've got um, buyers and renters who are reaching out to me. So it's been kind of cool to see that working for me and people starting to comment on my YouTube channel based on some of the videos that I'm putting out. And I'm also chopping up some of my longer form content so that it can be repurposed like what Robbie was talking about earlier. And there's like a, a program called Opus. I think it's Opus IO where you can take your longer videos from YouTube and you can drop a link in there and it'll repurpose your video for you. So you don't have to go through the whole process of repurposing video. So that's one of the things I've been working on and it seems to be working for me. So, so what's anybody that, else? Um, what's that program again? What is that? I'm going to pop that open. I think it's called Opus IO. I can um, look it up here. I think it's Opus Clip. Opus Clip. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Who's yeah, Monique? Did you say that? Yes. Hey, nice. Monique. How are you? <laughs> Hi. How are you guys? <laughs> Good. Yeah. So, what are you working on, Monique? So, yeah, I am. Um, I have been studying all of this stuff for the past few months, trying to figure out my plan of attack. I definitely. Um, have YouTube at the top of my list because your stuff lives forever on YouTube. So, you know, um, I think that that's the best place for a long form, like you said. And, uh, you know, Instagram and, you know, the reason why I don't, I'm not on TikTok right now, it used to be, but I think that TikTok is good just for some kind of like fun stuff, you mm -hmm. know, where it's not always so serious. So if you can you know, make some information, if you can deliver some information in a fun way to people, you know, that will help them remember you as well. So I think TikTok is good for that. But I definitely have a lot of information written down as far as different platforms like Opus. Um, so last night I have, I don't have that in front of me right now because I'm driving. So just on my way yeah. home. But um, I'll be happy to share that information maybe next time or okay. send it to some, whoever wants it. Okay. But yeah, I've been doing taking some extensive notes on different platforms that will help us um, get our message out to people in a better way and just reduce um, how monotonous it is to chop up your videos and things like that for short yeah. form. So it is yeah, pretty, uh, pretty, it is good. I liked I liked it a lot because it would just. It gave me like on one of my longest videos, it gave me 15 shorts I could choose from. So that was pretty cool. Mm. Yeah. So last last night I got information on some that you can get like 30. Wow. You know, wow. yeah, 30. And and there was another one that you can get however many you needed, you know, however much that they could get out of it. They so you could really like have three months worth of material. Wow, that's cool. Mm -hmm. That's cool. That's really cool. So I've never been one to like really want to do this live thing, but you know, I'm definitely going to come outside of my comfort zone and get it done. Yeah, that's good. It is, it is a little unnerving to see yourself. No more running you. from it. Yeah. 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 No more running from it. So just got to do it and, and just, you know, improve as you go along, you know? Right. Everybody is saying that, you know, their first couple of videos were like trash, but at least it gave them the confidence to put themselves out there. So we just got to do it. True. I agree. That's interesting because later in the video, in the thing, I have a slide. So Suman, I'm going to jump to him real fast. So Suman Kim is one of the top agents in Texas. I think he's the number one real estate agent in Texas for volume. His first video mm -hmm. he out in the summer of 2021. And he's just in his office with a black desk chair, a lamp and his microphone boom sticking out. And in August of 2023, He's uh, the top agent in Texas. He's done over $80 million worth of real estate. And he just basically, yep. started, he moved from Texas, from California to Texas. And his first video was like, why I moved to, to Texas from California. And, you know, the thing is, he was just very genuine and he grew his business exponentially and just took the risks, you know? Yep. I yeah. watched that as well. And I thought that that was, you know, a really good way to connect with people because, you know, there's going to be other people moving from one place to the other, you know what I'm saying? And that just will help them feel comfortable to reach out to you because you've already taken that journey. Right. Totally. Totally. Yeah. So I watch him a lot and I watch um, Mike 
Mike Sherrod. Yeah, he's great. He is amazing. Yeah. I love him. And then there's um there's um Jackson Wilkie, who is mm-hmm. another person who I talked about last when I was in Massachusetts recently. He has a channel called Channel Junkies, if you're interested in YouTube. Mm-hmm. And yeah. he um he's got 13 channels around the country promoting different markets with multiple agents and they're selling hundreds of millions of dollars of real estate. And he started in Idaho. Then he moved to Portland, Oregon to a market he wasn't even familiar with, started doing the videos. And he said he made a hundred videos about restaurants and stuff like that and learned that that's not what's getting him clients. Then he started making real estate videos and he, somebody said, why don't you tell people to call you? Cause nobody was calling him. So he put a call to action in his video saying, if you're moving to the area, give me a call. And so he doesn't even sell as a real estate. He actually works with realtors and he makes the videos everywhere and gets the, the channels up and running and then has other agents actually execute on working with the buyers and the sellers who come from his channel. And he's, you know, an EXP agent, like all the top agents who are doing all this stuff are EXP agents because the collaboration for EXP and the training and the openness of EXP agents to be helping each other is like off the charts. And it's really nice, you know? It's, yeah, it really is. I love the collaboration. This is um, the only company that I've had collaboration and inclusiveness at this level. True. Yeah. Yeah. It's mm-hmm. nice when people are open and inclusive. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So, all right. Anybody else? What do we got? Anybody, you know, what's working for you? Who wants to jump in? And if you're new, you know, what, if you don't have any, if, it, if, not, if you're not working it yet, you know, what social media platform do you want to focus on if you're just getting started? So feel free to share. There's a uh, individual out there named Jessie Lee Ward. Maybe a lot of people have heard about her. And um, she always um, talks about uh, diversifying your message. And she uses three, two, one, boom. You know, idea of instead of just asking all the time or being about your industry all the time, do a couple, you know, like three things about yourself and what's going on in life. And then two, you know, things that you've heard or little factoids about, let's say your community, then, then down to one, which is, oh, by the way, this person just bought this house and, you know, I was, I helped them and how excited I was for them. And then the boom is the ask. So you're never like out of seven, seven hits. You're never at really asked, but one, but you're creating that emotional relationship. Is Do you think that's a good way to go, Carlin? Or do you think, no, of you course. Know, especially I'm Instagram, Facebook, you know, I, I don't, I haven't gone into YouTube yet, but do you think that would work more so they get to know you and then you're, you're introducing real estate or you, you need to stay on your, you know, what you sell or what you do. You need to stay on that consistently. No, I think it's a, I mean, if it's working for her, then it's probably going to work for a lot of people to follow the same format because, you know, you don't always have to reinvent the wheel. You can use what other people are doing that's working for them and then take it from there. So I think, yeah, that sounds like a great plan. It seems like a great idea. How would you implement that? Well, everything, you know, just because I have a, you know, a larger family and a silly dog and a farm, you know, I'm able to show you know, show funny things that happen on the farm and funny things that are going on. And, you know, you know, I like baseball and, you know, or whatever, you know, rooting for my team or whatever. But then I talk about the, you know, the towns that really I want to focus on. So if my focus is, you know, let's say three towns, I talk about, did you know this? And did you know that about this area? And then, you know, down to, you know, I just sold this house and, you know, so on and so forth. And then it's, you know, I want to be your your realtor. Uh, that's probably how I would do it. So half of the stuff would have nothing to do with real estate, but it would do with me and getting to know me. But yeah. it sounds like Mr. Kim is like, he's all about, hey, Texas and real estate, which which obviously is working for him. So maybe the idea, you know, she's more about, uh, I think, like skincare products, let's say, or okay. things like that. So, you know, MLM, the idea, you know, she doesn't want to be overwhelming, like buy my stuff, buy my stuff. But mm-hmm. she wants you to get so maybe real estate is different because somebody needs to know your, you know, know, like and trust you to handle their real estate needs. So they really need to know you're locked into real estate. I don't know. I'm just I'm just so, so I would say one of the things to think about is how are people searching for 
real estate on the internet? And is the content that you're going to create going to have words and keywords in your content that when people go in and search for it, Google and YouTube or Instagram algorithms are hearing the information and then providing the answer to the people who are searching. So, you know, if they're, if somebody's searching for real estate in East Fishkill, New York, or Hopewell Junction, New York, where you are, then you would want to include keywords about that. You know, I live in Hopewell Junction and I've been in Hopewell Junction and, you know, East Fishkill. And, you know, if you're thinking of moving here, you're wanting to relocate here, some of the things I love, the pros and cons. So you would always want to try to reiterate in your message on your video that that's where you are and that if people are looking at buying or selling or relocating or selling their home fast, you know, that's another keyword that goes out there a lot. You know, or is is East Fishkill a good place to live? That's another phrase people often use when they're searching for a place to move to. If they if they have a place on their radar, they're going. Is this place a good place to live? So they type it in Google and they type it in YouTube. And I don't think they type it in Instagram so much. So I don't really think it would pop up on Instagram or Facebook as much. But it would definitely pop up on YouTube and Google because those are you know places where people definitely go in and search by those kinds of phrases. So I think the three, two, the three, two, one boom idea is a good idea, but just always try to remember to keep in the keywords that homeowners, home buyers and home sellers are using when they're searching for a real estate agent or to buy a home in an area. That would be my advice. Thank you. Sure. One thing I've been focusing on a lot myself is, uh, you know, trying to transition what works for you in person uh, and trying to transition, like use that on social media, right? Because in our industry, it's a lot about that that social connection that you make with the people within that first conversation that you have, if, even if it's on the phone, whatever it is, usually that's what grabs you, uh, grabs, you know, a client's attention is how you're coming off, right? Um, so what I'm trying to translate to my social media is is that, right, is making sure that that first engagement with that client, even if it's third party, you know, just through a video, make sure that it hits them the same way so one thing I always check about social media that I produce is making sure that I'm not being like too robotic, right? Yeah. Because if you think about it too much, you're not going to be you, you're going to be thinking about how to be you, right? right. So making sure that everything is uh, yet again, like Carlin said, is, uh, is genuine, is huge. Yeah. Being genuine seems to be the main thing. Like we always like to, we like people who are genuine and authentic um, and we relate to them you know, and not everybody, you're not going to get every buyer either. Like every bu buyers are looking for different things than a real estate agent. So if you're just be, if you're yourself, the people who are looking for somebody like you are going to find you and they're going to connect with you. And maybe you have a great video and people watch it, but maybe they're not, you're not the right real estate agent for them and they move on to somebody else. And that's fine too. At least you're providing value to people in the marketplace, you know, and they might remember you and share you with somebody else who they might feel like you would connect with somebody else better as a, as a real estate agent. So there's always that. All right. Anybody else? What, who else wants to jump in and talk about, uh, you know, what's working for you or where do you want to focus on getting started in real, on your social media stuff? Missy or Kimberly or Valencia or Lorraine? Anybody, feel free to jump I, in. I actually have been, been searching out people who are like homesteading that are realtors which is a, which is hard to find um, right? because that's kind of what I do every day. <laughs> yeah. Like I take care of animals in between doing everything else that I do. And yeah. I was thinking about doing that as, as like a YouTube channel type of thing, like follow me through my day, yeah. uh, you know, and then cut it up in different pieces and, 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 you know, put it together because that's what I do every day. Right. You know, and then I throw clean clothes on and I go out and fancy shoes and show a house. Right, you know? right. It's yeah. like, so I, I don't know. I was, I, I'm not good on video, on camera. I do not like it at all. But after the last meeting and you guys all, you know, all everybody talking about how they do it, I'm like, okay, I guess the old lady has to do it. So yeah. um, <laughs> I've been searching out different ways of incorporating me into this. So I'm not being uncomfortable i'm just being me in my everyday right so can i just jump in really quickly with that i think that you what i've seen a lot is that people just kind of put, put their phones up 
them kind of record themselves doing something that they do every day. So if you were to do something like that, then you could just write something on the actual video. Yeah. You may not have to speak too much. You don't have to put your face directly to the camera. And then you just make sure that, you know, because we've been talking a lot about um, making sure that you're giving value. Maybe you could just make sure that your caption has is like jam packed with value with the call to action at the end. However, it is that you want to, um, you know, whatever it is that you want the call to action to be. Right. But I think that if you were to do that, it would show a little bit more into your your lifestyle and how you can kind of and how you do both. And um, how you can relate to someone who might who making sure that they have like a lot of of land, and if they're looking to to be um home better, I don't know if I'm saying it right. Yeah, but, yeah. but if they are, how you'll be able to help them because this is this is your current you know your current lifestyle. Right. So maybe if you kind of just spin it that way, it would be some it would be a way to help. Yeah. So. Yeah. I, I like that idea of the video, like off in the, and then you can do voiceover. You can take it into a video editing and you can yeah. talk over it. You can have a little clip of yourself as an intro and throw that in there. So there are ways to not have to focus just like hundred percent on like the selfie thing going on. Um, yeah. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm all set with that. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, that's, that's the things that I've been toying around with, but I've been so busy since the meeting that I haven't been able to really get squared away. So sure. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so. And then you talked about your market in Connecticut being not, there wasn't really anybody out there doing what you're doing and the, the, like the taxes are great there and like, yeah, the schools are great I, there. Yeah. I mean, I moved from a busy area in Rhode Island to, you know, we don't even have a gas station here. <laughs> so, right. wow. you know, and, and, and my goal in life is to eat local, eat, eat within a 20 mile radius on certain times of year. It's easy. Certain times of year, it's not. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so oops and yeah you know so things like that that I am like deeply invested in in my life and as Robbie knows right I, I force all my food on my kids you know like I, I have our own eggs we grow our own vegetables you know I, I buy all local food and I can tell you where every farm stand is and what they carry and how they process it you know yeah so like I gotta I just have to figure out how to put it all together well, you know what? I mean, that is great information to share with people. Like some of the videos I've been doing on my YouTube channel, that I'm talking about those things. I had a Zoom call with a woman uh, two days yesterday, I think it was, about a Beacon. She's like, yeah, from your video, you said that. And from your video, you said this. And so it was oh. interesting to hear her <laughs> tell me what I was talking about in my videos, because I, you know, I'm, I'm just trying to come up with stuff that might be relevant to somebody who might be moving to the area. And I do. And she, and I did talk about a trader. I talked about how far Trader Joe's is from where I live. It's like 35 minutes. And she was like, I would be happy to be around a Trader Joe's because she lives in Northwest Arkansas where Walmart is the only thing available there because that's where the Walmart headquarters are in, oh. Fayetteville, in Fayetteville, Arkansas. And she was like, I'd love to have a Trader Joe's. So that would be a luxury for me to move to Beacon and, you know, to, to the area and then be able to drive 35 minutes and get a Trader Joe's. Right, right, right. And I even had the map of it up on my YouTube, you know, because like people like to see that if they're not, they don't know the lay of the land. They don't know what's around, you know, especially if they're moving right. a lot of people. When you make the videos on, on, for me on YouTube, it brings in a lot of people from outside of the area. And like, I got people from Austin and Arkansas and New Orleans, you know, California moving here, talking to me, asking me, you know, about stuff from the videos that I shared and which, which town might best suit them based on some of the things that, you know, that they're interested in without steering them, you know, obviously like if you like art, yeah, you would like this town or whatever. If you like wineries, right. yeah, you would like that area, you know, but when they ask me like questions like about politics or different things like that, I'm like, you just have to go do the demographic research for yourself. Yeah. I can't really comment on that. So you yeah. need to make whatever works for you, I don't know, and go do the research and find out if this is what is in line with what you're looking for, you know, right. Uh, that's how you kind of get around all that kind of stuff. But anyway, yeah, so cool. Who else? Kimberly? Kim, do you have anything? Do you, where do you want to focus on getting started? I'm probably going to start focusing first on, um, on YouTube. So I started kind of planning out areas of where to start and language and so forth. And again, my thing is getting over that initial, you know, part of, of starting it, of, you know, being on camera and talking and putting it out there. Yeah. So I just, I know I just have to 
do it because I do have some things put together. I just need to actually sit down and, and do it. One of the best things I've found if you want to get started on YouTube without having your cell phone in front of you is the map videos. So you basically film your screen. You have like you, you in your browser, you have up different windows and you have prepared kind of like a, how you want to talk about what's going on. And you can use Zoom and you can just do a film, uh, film your screen and go and talk about the maps. Maybe you bring up some different points of interest. You know, maybe you even have a, like a little presentation on another window in Google Drive or something like that. You know, like a, like I have up right now, where you so you're just a little dot and you know you're just a little head in the corner instead of being the main focus of everything. And so, like the guys who I've been watching on on talk about YouTube, they say map videos are one of their more successful videos because it gives people like a real idea of where stuff is because it's so hard to imagine it when you're outside the area. So if you're a little intimidated about doing like jumping on the YouTube, you might start with something like that. Okay. That sounds like something you want to do. I can, I can that show sounds you how like to do a good it. start. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's pretty, it's pretty, you know, your head's just a little thing in the corner. And so it's not like, yeah. you, to, you know, they just see you from here up. So it's pretty, pretty less intimidating. And you can also have a script written down to the side and, you know, people don't even know what you're looking at because your head's so small. You know? So it's like, okay. yeah. All right. Who else? Who wants to go? Kimberly Ruiz or um, Valencia? I'm right. sorry. This is Monique. I just have a quick question. When you say map videos, are you showing just like your area of, of a map or like your whole state? So just my region, like, um, cause I live in New York's Hudson Valley. So I'll just do the town like I live in or the town next door. But sometimes people don't know where the Hudson Valley is. And so I did a whole video on where is the Hudson Valley because it was showing up as a keyword in some of my, my stuff. So I just did a like a, a 20 minute map video about where the Hudson Valley is. And I had a bunch of different screens up and I was just showing people different things and how far we are from New York City, you know, how far we are from Albany, what's on the east and the west side of the river. Uh, what are some of the towns along the Hudson River? So that was just kind of an overview because I want to catch the audience who's looking for moving to the Hudson Valley because they read about it in a travel magazine or they saw it on TV or something like that. So I'll do that. Right. And do like the local community for the different towns to catch people who are searching about the local towns. I actually lived in the Hudson Valley before I moved here to Georgia. So Oh, yeah. My base is really in New York, and that's that's where I really hold my life that's at right now. But oh, wow, cool. I'm uh, trying to get my, well, I'm not trying. I have to take my test for Georgia here in the next week or so. Oh, cool. Where, where were you from in the Hudson Valley? Rockland County. Oh, okay. Yeah, cool. I, I don't get down there too much, but because I'm up in Dutchess. But yeah. I have a question. Yeah. Okay. Uh, how do you find what keywords so, or like how does that work is that similar to like the whole seo thing that people be talking yeah. about and all of that so yeah. how do you go about finding that okay so when so i i have a background in seo so when i started my real estate i have a website i started and it has blog posts on it and it also i have it um in google um console, the Google search console. So I see what people are searching for that bring them to my website. So I have a lot of information about the keywords that people are using to get to my website. So if I create a new post, it's like I put one up about Poughkeepsie. And so now I'm starting to get keyword, I'm getting people landing on my page about Poughkeepsie or I put up Wappingers Falls or Fishkill. So now I'm starting to see what people are searching for in regards to those towns. So you just kind of have to throw up a bunch of content. And for me, that's what I have to do. And that's how I'm using the keyword stuff. Um, and then when you start putting your videos on YouTube, you can have, there's the channel analytics, which I've popped up here. So here's my channel. You can go into, whoops, hold on. Crap. Of course I hit the wrong thing. <laughs> it's like just a second. So you can hit see more and then it'll bring up traffic source. And then it can, you can look at like you, the search. Hold on. Let me see. Hold on. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Traffic source. It's a little slow. So I hit, maybe I'm, maybe I'm doing this wrong. I can always do it when I'm at home by myself, but I can't do it when I'm on YouTube with people watching. <laughs> it's like, so you can basically see in the, the search, God, of course I can't find it, I'm sorry. But there's a way to see it in YouTube when you start having content showing up, what people are searching for to get to your YouTube videos. And that's how I do it. And then, like I said, in my Google search console, 
then I can um, see the keywords that people are searching for when it comes to when it comes to um, getting on my blog. So let me pull that up. Search console. So here's my here's my my personal my personal website. And so the things that people are looking for is living in Beacon. Is Beacon, New York, a good place? Is Fishkill, New York, a good place to live? Living in Fishkill. So these are some of the things that are coming up and, um, you know, moving to Poughkeepsie. Gay, and I'm a gay realtor, so I have a page about that. So people find me <laughs> that way. Or sell my house fast is another one. So these are some of the terms that people are like Marshalls and Poughkeepsie. But so these are some of the terms that people are seeing are using who end up on my personal blog. So that's kind of cool. I got a quick question. I, um, I had this thought the other day. I've been asking... Uh, obviously previous buyers for uh, Google reviews and it's yeah. very easy to do that. Yeah. Uh, what is your opinion on other realtors? Like, let's say I do a, a deal and I enjoy working with an individual. Uh, what is your opinion on uh, offering up Google reviews for both sides from different realtors that you work well, with? I think it's a great question. I mean, I've had I've had, I thought about it. I haven't actually done it. I've worked with some really nice realtors that I would write positive reviews about. But I don't know. I haven't. I haven't actually. I think I'm going to try doing it, like opening up the conversation, be like, "Hey, what's your Google uh, business? Uh, what's your Google business link, so I can yeah. leave you a review?" And and then, yeah, I've done it with a lender before too, right? Yeah, yeah. I I don't know. I think it's. Uh, I think it's. It's almost a way to uh, inject some extra value uh, to somebody, like by because uh, nobody's going to ask that question. Be like, "Hey, what's your Google?" you know, what's your Google business page? Some people don't even have one, right? So, right, right. Uh, yeah, I think it's a, it's a, I'm, I'm going to give it a shot because I've been thinking about doing it. I'm doing that old thinking too much and not acting enough. So, <laughs> well, you know, it, it might actually be good. I mean, if you're working with a realtor that you you had a really great experience with, I think it would be nice. It would, I think why not share the love, right? Yeah, that's, yeah. yeah. Obviously, if you have a, if you have somebody that's, you know, not, not that great, don't do it, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's a great idea. I think that's it's always good to edify your colleagues and also, you know, it it character review for them, right? So mm -hmm. I think that's a good thing. Yeah, I think so too. All right. Um, so let me see. What are your weekly goals and how can you get started tomorrow? So, you know, for me, I um because I started using that Opus tool, I started I threw some videos in. So I now I've got YouTube shorts planned all the way through November. And I'm trying, I'm, this is the first week I've actually been published. I've had a uh, YouTube video published and I'm not chasing. I do have to plan one for next week. I got to work on that next, but I'm trying to get a couple of weeks ahead on my YouTube so that I'm not chasing myself and, and that. And then when I create the videos and have them out there, then Opus can chop them up and then I can plan even further ahead. So, so for me, my, my weekly goal right now, my, my, my every this week and next week, my goal is to get two new videos created. For YouTube and then get them chopped up and scheduled on YouTube because you can uh, you can schedule all your all your stuff so it's kind of cool. What about you guys? That? I have the name of those other two platforms. One is called Flowdesk and another one is called Stan S T A N. I guess it's dot com for each, but those are supposed to be some really good platforms as well. Similar okay. to Opus, I think just. Um, maybe a little more user-friendly and, and more more things, more okay. tools. Cool. Is anybody focusing on Facebook and Instagram, like using the meta meta uh, suite to plan their stuff? I was at one point. Um, well, I was trying to use the meta suite. The problem is that I also like using, you know, the trending. So it's right. not something that I'm able to do with meta. Mm -hmm. um, so I then switched over to just creating the content, having it in Instagram, and then scheduling it. But I sat down this past weekend trying to schedule everything for this upcoming week. And when I hit schedule, it went and just posted everything. Oh, no. Yeah. That's so different. I had to... The good thing about Instagram, I don't know if you could do this with um, like with Facebook or through MetaSuite, is that instead of deleting it, it gives you the option to move it back into your drafts. Yeah. So that's what I did with everything instead of having to delete it and, you know, I had to post it manually. But right. I did like MetaSuite that it's literally you just put everything in and then you forget about it. So I don't know if there's something that's just like 
I don't know, some type of glitch or something. I don't know, but it wasn't working for me this past weekend. Oh, gotcha. I, ha I haven't done that much in, in Facebook MetaSuite. You know, I've tried to schedule a little bit ahead, but I've been trying to just focus on YouTube personally. But if you find something that works, bring it to the next meeting and we can all talk about it, you know, because I'd love to have it collaborative. You know, if you have good stuff like like this, you bring, you know, bring it up. So it'd be awesome. What about uh, who wants to go next? Pat, what are your goals for social media? Sorry, folks. I was muted, Carl. Social media, you know, for the next week, I'm going to I'm going to jump in. I'm going to do a YouTube video because I, I keep shying away from it for all the reasons you brought up. I feel very comfortable on Instagram and Facebook. Uh, I do stuff for my farm and I do stuff uh, real estate wise, just announcing agent attraction, but I have never done a YouTube video. I'm going to do one. So are that's, gonna, I'm going to. Are you going to focus on and, your. And hold me accountable. I'm going to do. Okay, cool. I mean, yeah, we got two weeks. Real, here. No, I'm going to do real estate. Like I'm going to talk about, you know, probably hope well, my town, yeah. something, something that, you know, that I know a lot of and uh, why I'm proud of it and everything else. Yeah, it's it's cool. People always like to get a little bit of insider information, you know. So, and I we should all plan to have it done by the next meeting. All of us who have done done this before. Yeah. So if you know, two weeks from now is when our next meeting is. So I think you know, it should we should be able to all get something accomplished by. by the next, <laughs> yeah. Well, we could uh, if we actually want to hold each other accountable. Come up with a list, and then you know what I'm saying, come up with a list that everybody has to uh, get done by the next meeting. Yeah. So yeah. everybody should have one singular thing that they want to get done and we'll, yeah, that's how we'll hold everybody accountable. Okay. All right. I do. I can write the list or do you want to, do you want to manage the list, Robbie? <laughs> like, all right. I so, have an idea. We ha I have an idea. We have a WhatsApp group and yeah. uh, if you want, uh, we can, Robbie, you guys are spearheading this. Just yeah. I'll, I'll type in the, uh, yeah. yeah, I'll type in the chat. I'll, as, as people Just say the what they're going to do, I'll put it in the WhatsApp chat. Okay, cool. Put it in the chat, Robbie and Carlin, and whoever else wants to put it in the chat. And then my executive assistant who's in that group, go ahead and create a, a Google uh, Google Sheet. Okay, cool. And write everyone's name down and then uh, just delegate it to them and they'll get it done for us. All you right. guys need to lead. You need to quarterback it. And then you've got support. We've got support for you right. to execute so yeah. it won't uh, take Thank too you. much of your sounds time. Good. All right. All right. Sounds great. Yeah. So we're going to, so write down your goals for the next two weeks. My goal is to make two videos about local towns that I'm interested in promoting to get clients. So I'm going to make, uh, make that, uh, make that happen. So, yeah. My goal, goal is to do one video about my hometown, but at least introduce myself to YouTube with a video. And then I'll um, I'll be able to share and people will be able to see. That's me too, as well. That's that's what I'm going to try to do. Okay. Awesome. Who else? Money. Yeah. So I don't have anything prepared to make a video. I think right now I'm at the stage of that I need to set up my YouTube pages. Um. So yeah, in two weeks time, maybe I could have at least one video ready. Okay, so set up your YouTube page in one video. Yes. Okay, cool. Hi, everyone. I'm mm -hmm. on the same wavelength. I'm definitely going to set up my YouTube page and um, have at least like, one about me video. Cool. Okay. Who else? I also will do um, one video as well, probably an introductory video. I love it. I, I love hearing each of you set your own goals, and we're going to help you hold yourself accountable. Love it. If you take a peek at the WhatsApp That's chat, guys, I just um, I just posted what my goal is going to be. So think of it like that and post it in the WhatsApp chat, the social media lead gen uh, chat, exactly what you want to do um, for the next meeting. All right. Vienna? Um, I'm trying to think about the only thing. I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh, thank you. One of the things that keeps coming up to me is like I've just been I just want to be more consistent on Instagram. So I think that I want to post anywhere between seven to 10 um, times on Instagram. Seven to how many? Seven to 10. Okay. Like somewhere in between that time. Like every other day, basically. So, so yeah. So between now and two weeks from now, that would be basically every other day. So that would be, that would be hopefully accomplishable, you know? Yeah. Fingers crossed for sure. 
about Yuri? Are you there? Yes, hi, I'm here. I'm sorry, I'm, I joined late. I'm, I'm not really sure what what you guys talked about. I'm just reading whatever's on the screen, but, <clears throat> okay. but uh, looking forward to more meetings uh, later on. Yeah, so think of a goal, you know, for the next two weeks, this is a biweekly meeting. Think of what your goal is, you know, what social media platform you want to use, um, how you can get started. It, you know, like Vienna said, one, seven, seven posts between now and two weeks from now. So that's one every other day. So, you know, that could be accomplishable. You know, are you, you know, one of the things I wanted to make sure is that the goals are trackable, actionable, achievable, and reasonable because sometimes people make too big of a goal and then they don't accomplish it, then they get frustrated. So kind of keep things bite-sized for now and just start, you know, the main thing is just to get started and not beat yourself up if you don't achieve something every two weeks. Um, just, you know, and maybe you only accomplish something the day of or the day before this what's in this group. And that's okay too, because at least you're you're at least getting motivated to do that. And hopefully that'll spur more motivation. So, you know. Yeah, I usually I usually um I post more on Instagram and Facebook. That goes automatically on both, but I'm not really, I don't really uh, have a YouTube for my realtor setup yet. So I guess that's going to be my next um, next goal to open a separate YouTube account and uh, start posting uh, on both Instagram and, um, and Facebook, um, YouTube, and possibly on TikTok also. Okay. That's a lot. That's a lot. <laughs> yeah. But if you make video for YouTube, and you put it on there, you can use one of those services, which chops up your video, like Opus and um, the other ones that Monique mentioned. And they can cut, they can break your video up into shorter segments, which you can use on your Facebook and your TikTok and your Instagram. So that's kind of a, if you just focus on YouTube for long form and then chopping, you know, then you can repurpose it without having to reinvent the wheel, which is kind of cool. Yeah, that, that makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah. Thank you very much. I'm yeah. looking forward to more meetings. Cool. Awesome. I'm looking forward to it too. So, so I basically try to plan to get ahead of schedule instead of chasing your posts, you know, use things that are out there, the tools that are out there for scheduling, because you can pretty much on every app you can schedule mostly, you know, you just got to figure out how the app works best. And then also, you know, when you're creating your content, this is one of the things I wanted to talk about. Who's your ideal client? Create content for your ideal client and how you can reach them. You know, Missy, you talked about uh, in Connecticut, coming up with homesteading stuff. You know, Pat wants to work on connecting with people in his area and Hopewell and East Fishkill. You know, and for me, I want to connect with people in the Hudson Valley and the towns that are around me that I want to sell in. So, you know, try to think of who you're trying to reach. You know, and how do your social media posts help develop warm leads and active buyers? So the goal of all this is to create business for ourselves. You know, we're not trying to get famous on YouTube or Instagram. We're trying to create content that people connect with and then they want to work with us. You know, I mean, we want to solve people's problems because after all, that's what we do. We're realtors and we're here to help people make their help their real estate transa transactions go easier and help them accomplish their goals. And also, you know, come up with a way to be yourself, you know, always try to be unique and be yourself because people really connect with you when you're genuine. So any comments on any of that? And, you know, think about it. I, I, lo I love the comments. You probably awesome. Cool. Uh, and my, then, one, my one comment as everyone is posting in the WhatsApp because we all see it popping up, right? All of, all, of you, all of your individual goals, love it. Yeah. Right. Your goals are your goals. And if you achieve your goals, then what, what your mission is and, my one word of advice, advice for everybody here is done. Done is better than perfect. Right. Yep. Just get it done. And you'll, yeah. you'll, you'll get better and better and better at it. Yep. Go ahead, Colin. Yeah, no, I, that's exactly the slide that's up right now. You know, fear of, fa fear of failure will keep you from growing and nothing needs to be perfect. Don't worry about what other agents think about you. Watch other people to see what they're doing. You know, emulate some of your favorite content creators who you think are, you know, have a big following or are selling a lot of real estate. If they're selling real estate, something's working for them, you know, and also also scroll back to where they started and see how bad their stuff was. You know, it'll it's um we all start somewhere. It's all we all start. We all have a beginning. Right. So. So, yeah, so that's pretty, you know, like Sum and Kim, I talked about him earlier. You know, he made a ton of money in real estate he started with his first video in 2021 and now he's doing 80 million dollars he was on cnbc and he, this is how he started with his smartphone a basic stabilizer and a microphone plugged into the bottom of his of his cell phone 
And he just started in a in a market he wasn't even familiar with in Austin. And now he's doing, you know, leaps and tons and tons of money and helping a ton of people in Austin. So so that's pretty much it. You know, so anything you know else you guys want to talk about between, you know, happy to open up the forum before we go. Any questions about anything or I think that was very powerful that you put your first uh, your first video picture next to the other ones. It looked like you had what, Sherard yeah. and him and everything. Because you're right. They all started out with the, their first video. Why shouldn't you be there? Because you're already kicking it. Uh, all the, the, the only difference between us and them and you is the fact that you guys just started. Yeah, that's it. I mean, just start. And, and and I fell off the wagon for making videos. I was kind of riding on the coattails of some of the stuff I had done earlier in the spring. And then I'm like, man, I got to get back out there and put some content out because I know that people are going to start watching my videos in the market and start putting stuff out. And people on the team, you know, other EXP agents that we know and work with here, you know, are going to start putting out videos. And we, if we're not staying on top of it, you know, and then also everybody connects with different people. It's not like just because I'm putting out the videos, they're going to call me, you know, they, somebody might want to work with Pat or Vienna or Kim, Kim or something, you know, everybody connects with different people for different reasons. So just do it. I'm all, yeah, I'm, just do it. Yeah. yeah, do it. Yeah. Just get out and do jump it. Out, okay. Jump out the plane and uh, knit the parachute on the way down. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, the funny thing is that the meeting at Tom's, Everybody was showing their first videos that were, they were so terrible. So I thought they were pretty damn good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know? So like, if you don't know, you don't know. Right. Exactly. Yeah. So. Yeah. So go do, go watch other people. I mean, you really learn a lot by watching some other people. So some of the things, you know, these are some of the resources I use, uh, like Jackson Wilkie, Levi, Jamie Resendez, he's down in Dallas, Suman Kim's in Austin, Karen Carr, and I think she's an EXP agent as well. These guys wrote a book about YouTube. There's another group of guys who do living in Denver, the Mile High Property Brothers, Mike Sherrard. So these are some resources that you can uh, go to and search their their YouTube channels and watch their training videos in the meantime. And it'll help you get motivated. Help me for sure. <laughs> it's like, yeah. Another Wrong thing that you could uh, another thing you could think about is reverse engineer the uh, the thought process is like, you know, realize that this stuff does take effort and thought process and mm -hmm. uh, realize how many like really think about how many people aren't doing this. Right. Um, me just jumping into the industry and just seeing how many people were refusing to use Opsidia as a lead generation platform. I mean, this is just another thing that somebody's not going to be willing to do. Right. I mean, so you, the faster that we crack it out, the, you know, the, the better. You said that the meeting you did like 20 deals this year or something. Yeah. And 12 of them were on Opsidia. Yeah. That's amazing. That's amazing. <laughs> and it's your first year in real estate. Yeah. So that's pretty cool. Well, my first office didn't even have a website. And Robbie tried to convince them to put in a web to Yeah, that's before I was even in the industry. On a website. <laughs> yeah. Yes. That was yeah. Perfect. So, I mean, just, just think about it. If you're feeling some kind of barrier on why you're not doing something, uh, realize that there's a ton of people that are in that same position. So why not just mm -hmm. be that person that just says, hey, screw it. Let's just do it. Exactly. Right? Yep. 100%. Love it. One All thing right, guys. that I try to think about. Oh, I'm sorry. Just really quickly, just one thing that I try to think about also is um, just the fact that we are obviously like doing sales and things is just also thinking about it from like a data standpoint. Um, you just trying to get yourself in front of as many people as possible. And I feel like social media is a good way to do it because it's, you know, the barrier to get into and using social media is very minimal. Right. So just the sooner that we get into um like creating the content and being consistent with it, the quicker we learn what works, what doesn't work, and we'll be able to get in front of more and more and more people as our reach expands. Right. Um, and I just think that, you know, how many no's are you going to hear before you hear a yes? Right. That is like that's a number that I'm constantly kind of thinking about. Mm -hmm. Great. Tom, anything else? That is it. We're at the top of the hour. Guys, I want to thank you, Carlin and Robbie for spearheading um, this. I appreciate you, love you for your leadership. And I can't wait until two weeks from now to jump back on this call with you guys. And everybody is gonna hit their goals, right? Yeah, totally. Everybody? Yeah. yeah. Everybody look at what you just typed into the WhatsApp in terms of your goal. 
come hell or high water the night before this call, two weeks from now, 13 days from now, if you haven't done it, do it. Right. Because done is better than perfect. Got it? Right. Yep. All right. All right. Have a good Thanks. night, guys. Thank Thanks, you. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Take care. Thank Bye -bye. you. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye.